2 million subscribers. We did it, guys. 2 million subscribers. It feels like just yesterday we hit 100,000, and then a million, and now we're at 2 million. From the bottom of my tiny heart, thank you guys so much. You guys give me this platform, you guys put food on my table, so thank you guys so much. I know why you clicked this video, but first, let me give you guys some context that you will need throughout this video. So first of all, I said I was done with icebergs, what's going on? I think I could just change the color and come back? No guys, that's not what I'm trying to do. I thought I should change the color because, uh, quite frankly, because I said I was never gonna do these again. Make it a little bit different. So why am I doing this again? for 2 million subscribers. It's a celebration, you guys have asked for it, and as a thank you for getting me to where I'm at, I'll give you guys another episode of this. It's even a blessing in the first place that you guys want more of something from me, so that's already enough. There will be a total of three 2 million specials on this channel, so stay tuned. And if you aren't subscribed, I'll earn your subscription by the end of this video. Also, this video has two parts. We're gonna go through the entire new iceberg, and the second part will be updating you guys on certain topics that need updates from the past three episodes. By the way, you do not need to watch the other three videos to understand this one. These are new topics, and even when I do the updates, I'm still saying the story, so just updated version. However, I would love it if you guys could watch the other episodes after this one. And just like in all the other videos, we're going from most tame to most gruesome. We're not going to be doing most known to least known. This is most tame to most gruesome. And within those sections, that's not in order. The only orders are the tiers. So you can be the judge of whatever you think is most gruesome within that tier. Oh yeah, and I have some very special guests in this video. Here are some profile pictures of the people that you can expect in this video. But yeah, with that being said, let's get started with the topic. The tip of the iceberg, Kool-Aid Man Challenge. Featuring on this tier is the bizarre Kool-Aid Man trend that took a rather innocent advert and made it into a destructive feat. I'm talking about the series of old commercials where Kool-Aid Man would bust through a wall and be like, oh yeah. These are from back in the day and for sure carry a lot of nostalgia. It however looks like some took reminiscing these ads too far. Since last year in 2023, there were reports of a TikTok challenge where people would run through fences in the same manner as the ad. Here's some footage of the challenge in action. Security video captured the vandalism. Teens breaking through PVC fencing while recording it. It's called the Kool-Aid Man Challenge, modeled after popular commercials from the 70s and 80s. Now to see this, several sections of his fence missing. When he looked at his security video, he watched teens break right through the fence. We're believing that it's a TikTok challenge. Suffolk police say the kids were recording themselves and that Don The aftermath of it was fences looking like this and like this. That second photo was actually captured in Raynham, Massachusetts, and the fence belonged to Jody Viola, who initially thought the holes were the work of a bear. That was until they checked the surveillance footage and saw people running from the street and charging to their fence and just breaking it. Viola, in the interview, said, three of them just backed up like you see in the movies and just ran into the fence like you were breaking down a door. They just threw their bodies through it. Some of the teens doing this trend were actually caught in Long Island, New York, and they were issued desk appearance tickets. Interestingly, among those caught, the youngest was just 12. Darkened skin filter trend. For this next one, let's go back to 2020. When this dark face filter trend had become a thing on TikTok in India, users were basically lip syncing to a popular song from back then, with the lyrics going on about a quote, white skinned girl with a quote, black heart. And that song was actually used in a movie. The hero in the film finds it hard to win over this girl due to her quote, black heart. Now, while the song doesn't mention a dark skinned girl, TikTok users creatively used that audio and that filter to show them with darker pigmentation looking all sad and then they transition with lighter skin and then they're happy. These videos were very explicit on how most of the TikTok users behind them thought of dark skinned people and the trend thus quickly drew backlash for promoting colorism. For context, you have to remember that India has a huge problem with skin color with a pretty dark history where darker skinned people were considered quote untouchables in society. Quote Dalit is a term used for those who were formerly known as quote untouchables end quote. This article actually explains how they're still fighting for social justice so I can't even begin to believe how this trend made darker skinned people feel in India. And unfortunately, that history still influences India today. At least going by Asian Boss Media's TikTok from May of 2023, where the interviewees admit they were treated differently due to their skin tone. And it is thus no surprise then that these biases would show up in a TikTok trend. Thirst Trap Cooking. All right, guys, like I said, we're going somewhat tame to most gruesome, so this one's a real a real eyebrow raiser. So let's talk about at the donut daddy, who does stuff like this. Yeah. 
yeah, there's no way you wouldn't notice the heavy sexual innuendos. And that's why the media has blatantly called it the art of, quote, hardcore food this particular account, Donut Daddy, seems to be some mainly women's favorite, you know, finding comments like these. But it's not just Donut Daddy that does the I want to have sex with food thing. There's a bunch of these. A bunch of them spawned in at some point. I don't know. There are others like Cedric Lorenzen, who has an equally large following and by his own admission, has stated that some of his videos are a bit too sexual and cringeworthy. Yeah, yeah, you can really tell how this is just pushing boundaries on TikTok. But yeah, I don't know who had the idea to violate food like this and let it serve as sexual innuendos when I feel like you just go on Tinder at that point. I don't, I don't even know. But anyway, let's head on to the next one. The public is the punchline. One arguably weird trend that has been on TikTok for a while now is videos that often begin with a person requesting a stranger to record them before escalating into chaos. The fact that they start with the request is why the trend is sometimes called, can you record a video for me? Or do you mind recording a video for me? Anyway, the stranger or those around them end up being in a prank situation since the person they're recording does something weird to provoke a reaction. A good example is this video. Now, for the most part, this trend is harmless. I think people who come across it for the first time might find it a little weird. Stop recording me. Stop recording me! Just throwing my two cents here, a lot of these videos are faked. It's so easy to just tell your friend, hey dude, I'm gonna pretend to be weird, just freak out. You know, it's it's, it's not anything crazy. But yeah, let's head on to the next one. Banana and Sprite Challenge. This here is I Show Speed trying to down a whole bottle of Sprite after eating three bananas. That clip is said to have massively popularized the Banana and Sprite Challenge, which honestly falls at the center of the weird TikToks category. Though this challenge has been a thing since the early 2010s, and for some reason it just always resurfaces. The challenge was simple. People would eat bananas and try to fill up their stomach with a bottle of Sprite, something that's impossible to do going by the science behind it. And by science, I mean that your stomach is basically too small to fill all of that. In more technical terms, the mixture of carbon dioxide dioxide from Sprite and protein from the bananas creates a reflux too big for the stomach to handle. A lot of TikTokers film themselves doing the same thing. All right, finally, let's head on to the next tier. The Surface the eye challenge. Although this next one is from 2020, I have to mention it because it borders on the riskier end of things when it comes to people doing things they find on TikTok. I'm talking about the eye challenge, which went something like this. So people would basically stare straight ahead at the flashlight of their phone and use TikTok's S5 filter to reveal the quote, true color of their eyes. The trend seems to have started with a user named Maria Blue, who apparently in a video claimed, if you have brown eyes, this filter turns them blue. S5 plus back camera and flash. I'm not kidding kidding they were claiming that you could change your eye color the real one not the one through the filter they were claiming that you could change the real eye color if you use your back camera and flash that yeah if you do it on one eye then you'll have one blue eye whoa this is yeah, I'm not, I'm not trying to get mad, I'm not trying to get mad, I'm not trying to get mad. This, of course, wasn't true, and even experts warned of the potential dangers of doing that. They, for instance, warned that, quote, potential retina burn can occur when light is intense and focused on the retina for long enough. A permanent burn on the retina would also no doubt leave a permanent blind spot in the eye. And just to clarify, in case it wasn't obvious enough, all the filter did was add a blue hue to videos. It had absolutely nothing with changing eye color. The Cha-Cha Slide Challenge I'm sure most of us are familiar with the song Cha-Cha Slide, a song by Mr. C the Slide Man, also known as DJ Casper. I'm not going to play it here for copyright purposes, of course, but part of the song has lyrics that go, slide to the left, slide to the right, crisscross. I'm sure you guys remember this song from something like a fifth grade event or maybe your white friend's wedding, but what does this iconic song have to do with TikTok? Well, scarily enough, some teenagers would record themselves acting out that part of the song while driving. You heard me right. They would swerve their car from side to side, and then when they said crisscross, they would rapidly swerve it back and forth. Even though TikTok removed the videos, we were able to find some on YouTube. In some clips, you can tell how terrified the passengers are, which is most definitely risky as we have seen similar challenges turn out to be catastrophic. For example, in 2019, a 21-year-old Shania McNeil crashed and died while playing chicken, a Snapchat trend. She was basically recording herself and her two friends weaving throughout oncoming traffic at about 100 miles per hour. So clearly these challenges can be very dangerous. Also, I'm Matty Balls. Shout out to Tuv, happy two mil subs. Thank you for having me. 
the penny challenge. Okay, so I'm gonna have to tiptoe around this one. I don't think I could show much footage because there are a lot of challenges that YouTube just doesn't like people talking about, just in case, you know, some people want to try it. And I'm sure I had a disclaimer at the beginning of this video saying don't do any of this stuff and that this is for educational purposes, whatever, whatever. But basically, this next one is genuinely stupid. I feel like I could say that about a lot of these. I'm not gonna be showing footage of people trying this, so I'm literally just gonna put background footage of some pennies on the ground or something. Anyway, typically referred to as the penny challenge, the trend involves partially plugging a phone charger into an outlet and then sliding a coin between the space between the charger and the outlet, causing the two terminals to touch. Sparks would sometimes fly, and this would be a real danger of causing a fire. In fact, there were reported incidences of fire, for instance, at Plymouth North High School, where students were apparently messing with sockets triggering a minor fire. That's all firefighters called to the school. The challenge, which trended under the now-removed hashtag outlet challenge, also had the potential for more devastating effects, as there was a reported case where Amazon Alexa recommended it to a 10 year old who had asked it to suggest an exercise for the weekend. The girl's mom did actually tweet about that incident saying that she yelled, no, Alexa, no. Yeah, that's a very chilling thought to think if, you know, the mom wasn't there and if the daughter was willing to try it. One chip challenge. As we move on to even more recent and stupid TikToks, next one is the one chip challenge. Basically, the challenge was to eat a single tortilla chip that came in a coffin shaped box, and that apparently had a crushing of seasoning from the spiciest chili peppers in the world. According to the company behind it, Pocky, the chip was meant for adults, and even the label warns that it shouldn't be taken by children or people sensitive to spicy food. In the classic style of the internet, though, it seems no one was paying attention to the warning, because just as the challenge was at its height, a 14 year old high school student died from eating one of the chips. The teen's parents were called to school and were told that their kid had fainted after taking the chip and he even showed the picture of the 999 Pocky chip that he had taken. Later that day, while at home, he passed out. He was rushed to the emergency room but sadly didn't make it. Also, an interesting bit about this challenge is that it was started by Pocky themselves. It was a marketing tactic dating from 10 years back and the goal was to rank people between levels of quote harmless and quote predator, depending on how long they could hold the burning sensation before drinking some milk or water. After the teen's death, the company removed that challenge from the website. However, videos of the challenge are still up on TikTok. Dr. Kim, medical TikTok. While home to some genuine medical professionals, it's quite often plagued with random videos, which we will be covering in this video. One such account, which I know like the back of my hand now, is Dr. Kim. There's a chance you've more than likely seen these weird face surgeries floating around. I actually made two detailed videos on the whole investigation I did. So if you wanna watch that, make sure to watch it after this video, don't ruin the watch time. Like I said, I know this topic very well, so I'm gonna give you guys a quick summarized version. And if it interests you, well, lucky, you, you have more videos to watch. Anyway, in January of this year, creepy looking facelifts were going viral on Twitter and TikTok. I decided to do some research on the situation and uncovered that there were multiple accounts promoting these surgeries and that they had WhatsApp contacts in their bios. I texted the so-called Dr. Kim and pretended to be interested faking that I had a wife who wanted a facelift. In the end, they revealed that Dr. Lee Fang would be performing the surgery, not Dr. Kim as promised on their TikTok. After that, I got a tip from a viewer explaining that there's more to the story and we uncovered, with the help of legal documents, that Dr. Lee Feng's facility has been caught with expired medicine, and they've been in legal trouble before. And as of February 18th, the account has been banned on TikTok. I made a TikTok slash YouTube short covering the account being banned. I didn't think that was worth another video. But what always gets under my skin is when people try to be different and they're like, well, the facelifts actually look beautiful when they're fully healed. Look, they look better than what we thought was fully healed. They're still not good. They're good for Chinese standards, but there are better Chinese facelifts that aren't by Dr. Kim. I don't know why people were hopping on this like opposite trying to be different uh, his facelifts are actually kind of good no they're not they're they're horrible if they're good then i'm sure you're confident advising your mother to go get a surgery by dr kim like no it's not, like the being different was like so weird to me it's horrible Let, let's head on to the next thing Eye color surgery. I wanted to call this next one an occurrence because I only thought it happened like a few amount of times, but it turns out it's been going on for a while. So I found two videos of it, this one and also this one. The whole point of these surgeries is to get a permanent eye color change. And in that last video, it's alleged that the woman got something called an iris implant, where an iris made from silicone is slid into a slit that is cut into the cornea. However, others believe it's the Corrado pigmentation procedure, which is basically tattooing your eye. Now, what most of you might not know is that the iris 
virus implant procedure is actually illegal in the USA. Well, unless you have an eye defect from birth that prevents you from having eye color. But other than that, you can't get in the US, it's simply too risky. The other one, carotid pigmentation, well, it's not illegal, it's also highly discouraged. But that doesn't stop people from getting either of those two procedures, as you can easily fly elsewhere and find dozens of clinics that will be willing to perform this surgery on you. In fact, that's what Tamika Tiny Harris, the American singer-songwriter, did. She flew out to Tunisia, Africa, and got the iris implant procedure done. She said it took about 5 to 10 minutes per eye. Interestingly, her daughter Zanique also hopped on the trend and changed her eye color from brown to grayish blue, although she regretted it, reversed it, and admitted she wouldn't recommend it to anyone. Dahlia Karezi. Chances are that you've come across someone on TikTok offering medical advice. And like in this next case, it's possible they're just faking it. Dahlia Karezi was such a person, and although I couldn't find her TikTok videos, she deleted all her social media accounts, that is, following a court case, she apparently offered medical advice between 2019 and 2021 to her about 240,000 followers on TikTok. She was particularly extremely popular among Iraqi and Kurdish residents in Western Sydney. Her story is actually kind of insane because it went beyond TikTok. She had successfully applied for research positions with NSW Health and the Cancer Institute, having constantly lied about having a doctor's and BBS degree, and a master's of reproductive medicine, and even using the initials OBGYN. On TikTok, wearing scrubs and donning a stethoscope around her neck, she offered advice about sexual health, ovarian cancer, HIV, and fertility. Her defense was that the information she was sharing was from NSW Health Direct. Sydney's Downing Center local court found her guilty of, quote, impersonating a doctor and pretending to be a medical specialist, and fined her $13,000. She expressed regret for her actions, terming the position she was in was, quote, very out of character. And why did she do all of that? Was she trying to get, you know, up in the ranks and be a real doctor at some point? Well, no. It was to keep up a lie that she told her friend in 2017. The lie was that she was studying medicine, which, uh, she really went fully into character, didn't she? Jesus Christ. Let's on to the next tier. The body. Kia boys. All right, this is where the iceberg starts getting a little spicy. Okay, okay, okay. I'm glad you're still watching. Ushering us halfway down the iceberg is the Kia boys challenge, which, if we're being honest, should just be called the car theft challenge. Having begun in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, this challenge escalated into a big countrywide problem, leaving Kia owners with situations like this one. Of course, the police were also involved with several chases like this one. Now, the reason Milwaukee was at the center of this story was because, at least according to this report, it just has a history of of reckless driving. That report actually features clips of when the challenge started with kids stealing the Kia and Hyundai car models and basically trashing them around the neighborhood. And just to emphasize how bad this was, between 2021 and 2022, the theft of Kias increased by 503% and that of Hyundais by 363%. Also, documents obtained on car crashes by the media revealed that the cases were indeed spread across the country and in some of them, people actually got killed after the theft. Due to the devastating nature of the losses incurred, both companies, Kia and Hyundai, got sued and settled for $200 million, with $145 million going to cater for out-of-pocket losses for customers. And in case you were wondering why the companies would agree to settle, well, it's because apparently their models between 2015 and 2019 were not fitted with electronic immobilizers. This allowed the thieves to easily bypass the vehicle's security with tools as simple as a USB cable to bypass the ignition. But why is this on the iceberg? I'm sure you could tell by the background footage that this was shared all over TikTok. The so-called Kia boys would literally just give tutorials on how to hotwire cars, specifically those models. But yeah, it was easier than ever. I'm sure this method is still used. There's no reason for it not to be used. You want to pull it down and then break it down and then it's going to be like a little a silver piece. You just put the flathead in and you break it. Then you start it with a charger piece like, a, like this. And with the USB cable, someone can start up and drive off with your car. So if you own an older Kia model or an older Hyundai model, definitely go ahead and do some deep research on your specific model of car. And uh, if you don't, maybe the Kia boys will uh, end up with a new whip, a new whip for the summer. <laughs> anyway, let's head on to the next one ice cream challenge. I've called this one the ice cream challenge, but it's really a video by a TikTok couple. Taquan Hines and Asia from Portsmouth, Virginia. This here is the video. Where's Asia? Get ice cream. Let me taste it. Let me taste it. All right, Ariel, put it back. Ariel, put it back. Come on, let's run. Let's run. 
<laughs> and you can clearly see that they both take turns licking the ice cream before Heinz tells Asia to put it back in the freezer and then both of them just run away anyway. And you can really tell as well that they're like holding in their laughter. Now, this behavior is obviously degenerate and disgusting, I would know, and it did spark a lot of outrage online. And then the thing is as well, they actually had the gall to like share it on Twitter, thinking that they are in the right. And this was like a, a laugh out loud, hilarious prank, which obviously led to them getting comments like these. And a little update to this story is that Taquan posted on his Instagram and confirmed that he and his girlfriend did actually buy the ice cream. And he was just gaslighting whoever thought they actually, you know, did the action they were convincing people they did. All right, let me show y'all, bro. This is the ice cream. This is the ice cream that y'all say we lit and put back on the shelf. It was our ice cream. It was already paid for. This is our ice cream. I'm showing this video because people really want the video. We did not do nothing nasty like that. Me and Asia's not nasty people, bro. Be real. Stop being stupid. Stop being goofy. We did that to fool y'all was a prank. And we fooled y'all, bro. And we're not going to jail. We already talked to the police. Get right, goofy. Yeah, and that doesn't take away the fact that they did something fucking disgusting for clout. I mean, what were they expecting? People to cheer them on? Oh, you got us, dude. That was a great prank, dude. Holy shit, that was awesome. Nonetheless, the situation is extremely stupid and avoidable. You even had a food poisoning expert, Bill Marner, which is one of the worst jobs I could ever imagine. And he saw this trend and he basically pointed out that it's pretty bad. If someone has a communicable disease, they could probably pass it on to you. And then he actually goes on to say that the entire food industry is so bad that no, actually, there's probably a higher chance of you getting food poisoning earlier on, not the guy finishing it off by licking it with his disgusting lips and then posting it on TikTok. Now, if you wondering why this trend sounds a little bit familiar, it did actually surface back in 2019. For example, there's a video here of this gentleman and he was actually later arrested, which is hilarious. There was also this incident back in 2020, and you actually had this 24-year-old guy who had to spend a month in jail. And then on top of that as well, he had to pay a $1,000 fine and then over a $1,000 to Bluebell Creameries. Dude, could you imagine like walking around like Ben and Jerry's in the UK, just go lick all of them, and then you need to pay Ben and Jerry's money? Like, like, have you seen how much a part of Ben and Jerry's costs in the UK? They're like six, seven quid. Also, remember as well that a lot of this was during and at the height of COVID-19, the pandemic that actually made people so cautious, they stocked up on toilet roll. They they bought all the pasta in UK supermarkets. And on top of that as well, no one wanted to buy Corona. This is a totally separate thing, but no one wanted to buy Corona beer because of the association it had with the coronavirus. That is how anxious and paranoid people were thinking if, if they drank a beer, they'd get COVID. But other people would also lick the top of ice cream. Okay, so I'm gonna do a little plug. I run this small channel called Paracynical. I, I do game reviews that are like way too long. It's usually just kind of like explaining the plot. Uh, if you could like and subscribe, I really want to hit five subs by the end of the year. Yep. Cheers, guys. Whip talk. One of the darker sides of TikTok is whip talk. A really weird and surprisingly big community of young people experimenting with drugs. I believe this group has been a thing since a long time, but it recently exploded on TikTok in 2023, with the media calling it Gen Z's hippie crack pandemic. Now, what I specifically want to focus on from that community is something disturbing called chroming. Basically, a trend where teens have been inhaling toxic substances, which I'm not going to show videos of that, but they're inhaling toxic substances to get high. We're talking about inhaling things like aerosol cans, nail polish remover, hairspray, deodorants, glue, nitrous oxide, paint, etc. This is of course extremely dangerous and has been described as posing a bigger health risk than cocaine. Like I said, I'm not going to show any footage of people doing drugs, but I will show like the little cringe things that in the little text they put. So that'll be on the screen. You know, people describing their experience with inhaling deodorant or even POVs. You just inhaled some Lysol and can't feel anything and tell your friend to hit you. So cool, dude. And and if that's not scary enough, here's another screenshot of a girl talking about how she passed out in the park for two hours from inhaling deodorant, and another whose mom almost sent her to rehab for inhaling all the deodorant in the house. We're talking about spray deodorant, not the regular bar one, or at least that's regular to me. And yes, there have been some casualties, such as in March of 2023, Ezra Haynes, a 13-year-old high school girl from Melbourne, Australia, died after inhaling too much deodorant. She had been at a friend's sleepover when she did it, and was reported going into cardiac arrest, and also sustaining irreplaceable brain damage before passing on eight days later. Dragon Breath. 
Look up Dragon's Breath on TikTok and you'll find videos like this one and this one. All of them present this seemingly super cool way of enjoying different snacks, particularly candy and cereal. The idea is simple. Candies, for instance, are dropped in liquid nitrogen and thus end up creating a vapor effect when eaten. You'll probably agree that it does look kind of cool, though it feels a little weird when people blow the vapor out of their nose and even their ears. Now, the problem is that the risk is insanely high and the effects can be devastating. In January of 2023, for instance, 20 kids were harmed when eating the candy version of the snack in Indonesia. They suffered severe stomach pains, burns to their skin, and food poisoning. Two ended up being hospitalized. Now, it's a known fact that liquid nitrogen is used in food preparation, and even the top chefs use it. What's probably unknown to many is that because it's clear, colorless, odorless, and extremely cold, it can cause damage in ways you can't even anticipate. This is especially true for kids because they might not know when they're taking too much of it. Plus, it looks cool. Experts have actually warned that it might lead to damaged organs, including burns in the mouth and esophagus. It is thus a little bizarre seeing that it's so hyped up on TikTok, and even worse, it's mainly young people in these videos. Rainy Street Serial Killer On April 23rd of 2023, a TikTok user by the name of Lauren Burke uploaded this video to her page. There was nothing going on in Austin, Texas, specifically on Rainy Street, then why are there police officers going around the trail all night in four-wheelers? If you can see how many police officers are going down the trail. If there's not a problem, if there's nothing going on, then why are they increasing police presence so much? They're going down in like little four-wheel car, four-wheeler cars. At first, I didn't think that there was anything actually going on, but now, now I'm not so convinced. I'm a little scared, to be honest with you. That's a video that you might not think much of if it came up on your For You page, but let me give you some context to see how deep this actually goes. So she's basically talking about Rainy Street in Austin, Texas. That's near a lake called Ladybird, which, very strangely, has had a lot of bodies pulled from it. Going by this list, which is backed up by news articles, between May 2008 and February of 2023, a total of 18 bodies had been discovered there. And that's not where the list stops, because four more bodies were discovered in 2023, and one just earlier this month. This is led locals to believe that there's some sort of serial killer roaming around Austin. Some are convinced that the killer has been spiking drinks at local hotspots, but that's not confirmed. The police in Austin actually say that there's no proof connecting all the bodies. Now, going back to that TikTok we started with, it makes sense that the lady says there's something going on in the area, right? And she isn't alone on her fears since the city's 86,000 member true crime Facebook group, yes, that's a thing in Austin, I think it's pretty cool actually, has had long held suspicions of a serial killer, even dubbing the killer, Rainy Street Ripper. According According to a report by SA Current, one of the group's members said that they were 100% sure there is a serial killer behind the bodies after the last body was found in 2023. The recent body from February of 2024 has driven their confidence up. Yeah, there's not really much I can add on to this story, but I'll end this one off by saying, all my subscribers in Austin, Texas, please stay safe out there. Begging families. Going live and asking for gifts and donations is nothing new on TikTok. But what makes this next case absurd? is that it involved families begging in TikTok themselves, being accused of taking the proceeds in a rather exploitative arrangement. So this whole story revolves around refugee families in Syria who, following the devastation caused by war, turned to TikTok live streams to try and raise money to get by. These clips from the BBC show what the live streams look like, and it goes without saying that the scene is devastating. What makes it worse though, is that while the kids would get as much as $1,600 an hour, TikTok, based on its policies, would take 70% of the money, leaving the families with a rather tiny fraction. And as if that wasn't enough, these families did not even end up with 30% either. Rather, they'd have to give up a considerable portion to agencies that hired and supported them. And yes, you heard that correctly. There were agencies that were recruiting families just like this and providing them with phones, Wi-Fi, and SIM cards to do these streams. This was all uncovered in that BBC documentary, by the way. The documentary was quite damning as it offered deep insights into the exploitation of the world's most vulnerable families by a crooked network of just a select few companies. And interestingly, TikTok later denied claims that it was benefiting from these schemes and claimed that they did not allow exploitative begging on their platform, ultimately proceeding to ban all 30 highly similar accounts that were found during the investigation. Lastly, it should be noted that they also denied taking a 70% cut, but wouldn't divulge exactly how much the amount truly was. Accounts Last Eerie Video So, an Accounts Last Video. This here is part of it.
It was posted in March of 2023 by 18-year-old Cara Santarelli, a TikToker with just about 50,000 followers. And this video was posted a week before her death. The caption says, When they try to call me a bad driver, but I've never hit a person or an actual car. Yeah, and as I mentioned, she died a week after posting that video and the cause of death. Well, she got into a head-on collision with another driver who was going down the opposite way on the road. This was on Highway 29 in Escambia County, Florida. The other driver was in a Chevy sedan, and apparently after the collision, the sedan caught on fire and both drivers died on the spot. A lot of people on TikTok did indeed find the whole situation strange and flocked to her page to confirm for themselves. That led to her last video, the one I just showed you, being viewed more than 3 million times and garnering over 2.3 million likes. Yeah, there's not much more to say about that one other than rest in peace. Fairy flying trend. One of the trends that's been on TikTok for a while, despite raising rather disturbing concerns, is the fairy flying trend. Basically, videos like this one and this one from 2021, this clip from 2022, and this one from 2023. There are also some videos from 2020, but I'm not gonna show that. I'm sure you get the point. Basically, people would record themselves like hanging, but they wouldn't show them holding on to something. It would just show like their feet or their legs just like levitating from the ground. You know, it's named the fairy flying trend. The goal was to look like a floating fairy. According to Forbes, post under the hashtag fairy flying as of July 2023 had a whopping 66.4 million views on TikTok. Now, I'm sure you can probably tell the problem with these videos because it just looks like they just hung themselves. Can I say that on YouTube? I'm sure you guys know what I mean though if I censored that word. It looks like they deleted themselves and the video was posted. It almost looked like they were promoting a deleting yourself. According to experts, that appearance can trigger people into thoughts of self-harm or make people prone to self-harm more comfortable with the idea since it looks like it would be getting normalized. And you know the TikTok algorithm, if you watch a video all the way through and engage with it, leave a comment, a like, maybe even a share, other videos like that will be shown to you. So if for some reason someone that is prone to uh, self-harm sees floating legs on their For You page and they watch it for long enough, well, surely they might see floating legs again and get bad thoughts. You know, that's that's basically the point. It was just extremely popular is what I'm trying to say. And also, you don't look like a fairy. <laughs> anyway, let's head on to the next tier. The Abyss, live streamed birth. Imagine opening a live stream on TikTok to find yourself watching a woman giving birth on stream. And the stream isn't by her, it's apparently by someone else who went live by mistake. Well, that's exactly what happened in the Gak Narodny Front Hospital in Belgrade, Serbia on April of 2023. Apparently a nurse accidentally live streamed a birth at the hospital. And when she came under fire, she insisted it was a mistake and apologized. I don't know how it's a mistake when from the screenshots I saw, looks like it's propped very nicely somewhere getting all the action and you know i use mistake and accidentally very loosely the nurse said that she simply forgot and left the phone on on a nearby glove rack which again i'm gonna have to press x to doubt because first why are you going live at a hospital like th there's no reason to I, I just see this as a clout chase honestly now that stream was watched by 200 people and again she was condemned for violating someone's privacy and deeply apologized for it and and in case you guys were wondering, she was fired. Her case though reminded me of this one from a while back where a woman gave birth on a Delta Airlines flight and someone recorded and posted it on TikTok. Although, you know, the user was smart enough to not actually show it, just tell the story. But yeah, it's crazy that a few years from now, there's gonna be a kid that's gonna be like, I was born on TikTok live. I don't know if that's gonna be a flex or not, but um, I guess, I guess we'll have to wait and see. Let's get on to the next one. Babies with hydrocephalus. We just covered the case of refugee families in Syria begging for money, and this next case falls into that category. I'm talking about begging for money. I'm talking about such live streams that feature kids with hydrocephalus, a condition that leads to abnormal build of a fluid in the brain, thus enlarging the form of the head. Obviously, it's a devastating disorder to have, and hence why even coming across it on TikTok is a bit unsettling. In the case that the live streams featuring such a child are genuine, as Dylan Page pointed out in this video, it's hard to imagine the amount of pain that they and their families are going through. I should actually mention that the first baby I showed you had someone on Reddit claiming they're from Malaysia and their story is genuine. On the flip side though, as these Reddit comments suggest, there's a chance that the people behind these accounts are just ill-intentioned and are trying to use sympathy for likes and donations. And yeah, this wouldn't be the first time this has happened on TikTok or any other social media. Sometime last year, someone posted this on Reddit and a majority of the comments were in agreement that it was likely a scam. But yeah, using someone's disability for donations is extremely scummy. And like I 
I said, there are some that are genuine, but even for the genuine ones, these are just my two cents. I'm, I'm trying to tiptoe around this. I just overall think it's a horrible situation to show your child in that type of state to hundreds of thousands of people and you don't know what they're going to say and how that's going to make the kid feel or you feel. That's that's really what I worry about. It's just the kids seeing those comments when they get older or yeah, just basically the horrible comments that the kids would see. And I understand that the donations are like last resort. I'm sure I'm sure they're trying to get an actual job. But yeah, let's head on to the next one. Torture of Kira Hart. I know a lot of weird videos circulate on TikTok, but this one is simply a video above most of the others. So let's begin with this clip. Kind of. I don't know if it was like keeping hostage or something. Because because I just walked out home and she was at her house. It's Kira. And she was at her house and we just pumped her and we we're just like torturing her for like four hours straight. And it was funny as fuck. So she's like full fucked up. Like all of a sudden your photos are like fake. Then it's a month of birth. Now it's difficult to make out what the girl is saying, but part of it reads, basically just tortured someone, kind of. It's Kira, and we're just like torturing her for at least four hours straight. It was funny as f She's like full f***ed up, like I'll send you photos of her face. Now, who was she talking about? Well, she was talking about this other girl. This girl being Kira, a 14 year old from Queensland, Australia. Kira had been invited over to a sleepover by three other girls who ended up torturing her for four hours, inflicting such serious injuries on Kira that she ended up needing to go to a hospital. She had been slapped, punched, cut, and even stabbed with a knife. The three girls, whose names would later be revealed, ended up filming the entire act as it took place. This all happened on March the 11th of 2023, and although footage of it does exist for the sake of the victim and decency, we won't be showing that here. But this clip blew up on TikTok and a bunch of other social media platforms, showing the story to a much wider audience. Not only was this a good thing in that it provided a lot of evidence towards Kira's case, but it also put the story out there to a lot of people who would later go on to support Kira. As a matter of fact, her GoFundMe ended up raising over 82,000 Australian dollars which is a little over $53,000 in American currency. Also, it turns out the house she was tortured in burned down on March the 29th, just a couple of weeks later. And the three girls who were responsible were not only charged for Kira's torture, but also charged on a similar instance that came out when all of this became public, as they had attacked another girl in a similar way just a few days prior. So while this is a tragic and heartbreaking case, it's good for one that Kira got the support that she did, and two, that three dangerous people now have to face the consequences for their actions. That's all for me, but thank you very much, Tuv, for including me in one of your videos. It really does mean the most. Cat blending video. There was a disgusting video that made rounds a while back that showed a real cat in a blender, and you can assume the rest. This topic was going viral on TikTok and Twitter, and saying that the internet was upset about this would be an understatement. Now, allegedly, based on this Noah Glenn Carter video, people were able to track the person who did it based on small text on the blender. Here's everything we know about the person who did the horrific cat blender video. The first place on the entire internet we can track this video to is this Twitter account. Now, it doesn't seem like they're the ones who made this video, but they're responsible for bringing the story to light and helping the person that did it to be caught. Now, the person who was responsible for blending the cat was caught because of the text on the blender. That small detail helped people find out that the person was from China, and then within hours, people on the internet already knew where they lived. People quickly found out that the man who made the video is a known Chinese blogger, and a lot of people are claiming that he's only gotten two months of jail for the cat video, but I can't find anything to verify or disprove this. The consensus, though this might not be verified information, seems to be that this was all the work of a Chinese blogger. There was a speculation that he got two years in jail, though that was never proven. Though this did remind me of when there was another trend in 2021 where people would tell other people to look up Art of Zoo on Google and get their reactions. Again, this is a little TikTok trend I'm bringing up because it was also animals and why not just put it in this section anyway so looking up art of zoo on google will result in people doing things with with animals i, I gotta censor this word but i'm sure you could read my lips yeah and it was just like a funny thing to like yo 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 mary look look this up while i get your reaction i don't know man that's kind of it is it is really weird <sighs> let's head on to the next one
deep fakes of murder victims. When we talk about the dark parts of TikTok, it's probably surprising, or maybe not, that AI has made its way there. And in what way? Well, how about deep fakes of child murder victims with bold captions of how they died, like these two. And a deep fake, just in case you didn't know, is a use of AI to take the likeness of a person and generate a false, lifelike version of them. Now, obviously, AI can be used for a lot of good things, but it can also be used for a lot of horrible things. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is just the tip of the iceberg. Ah, see what I did there? It's just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to deep fakes being used for bad things. Don't even get me started on the P O R N that can be made simply with the use of AI. But yeah, this is so scummy because the way they use, remember, these are real people that died and a lot of them are children because I'm going to assume the creator is just like, oh, this gets really good attention. And I know some of us are guilty, bro. I'm going to go admit I'm not guilty. I never watched one of these, but some of y'all are guilty. Y'all giving this dude watch time. So be careful. Next time you see these deep fake <laughs> murder victims, yeah, don't give them the attention because these are real people that died. And now pff, your legacy is ending up on, on a TikTok page on a TikTok deepfake story page. And the hook, man, it's so gory. The, the sentences that they use as hooks. And in case you're one of those people that are like, y'all are just snowflakes. All right, bro. Imagine your little sister, for example, dies. Then you see her story being told on a TikTok deepfake account. You're gonna feel some type of way about that. By the way, this is the clip that I use for the thumbnail. Ended my mother's life with 79 stabs and gained notoriety for the gestures I made during my trial. I even have a fan club now. This one's about Isabella Guzman, which we actually spoke about in part one. In part one, we spoke about her getting TikTok edits, and now it's a little bit different the way we see, I guess, abused people when they retaliate and murder their abuser. It seems like it's very supported nowadays, even in 2021. It seemed like it wasn't, or I mean, Actually, even in 2021, that's why she was getting TikTok edits. I guess I just had a different opinion that it's not cool celebrating something like that. But like seeing the support that Gypsy Rose has gotten, I know this is like a different topic. It's just making me really believe that like if you get abused, you can get away with killing the person that abused you. And it's almost like the just internet just instantly loves you. Kind of controversial personally, I guess. I just don't think death is good no matter what. Anyway, the story of Isabella Guzman in a nutshell. In 2013, this 18 year old at the time stabbed her mother 79 times. Like I said, apparently she was being abused by her, and she's still in a mental institution till this day. According to Kieran Burt, as Isabella was 18 years old when she committed the crime, she was tried as an adult and charged with first-degree murder. However, a judge accepted a plea of insanity and found her not guilty. Isabella was sent to the Colorado Mental Health Institute in Pueblo. I know I went off track with this one, but I figured I should give you guys a mini update since we just mentioned her. Anyway, let's head on to the next one. Sex torsion training. There is probably no good way to start this, so I'll just lay it out. There is a group of scammers called Yahoo Boys that have been sharing training materials on TikTok on how to sex tort minors on Instagram, Snapchat, and Wiz. Yup, that's a thing on TikTok. A whole report was done on it, and it even includes screen grabs of said videos. This here is an example, and here is another whose videos got over 75,000 combined views. Now as recently as of January of this year, it has been reported that the resulting crime, financial sextortion, has been rapidly rising particularly in North America and Australia. Again, all thanks to Yahoo Boys. Basically, as I have mentioned, kids and teens are the main targets for this group. And the way it works is that the criminals, once they obtain nudes, threaten to share them with a person's family or friends, unless they get paid, repeatedly via different methods that include gift cards and crypto. Also, I cannot emphasize enough how depraved this is. Not only does it involve minors, not that adult targets would be better, but it has devastating consequences. In March 2022, for example, 17-year-old Jordan DeMay, a Michigan high school student, himself dead after two Nigerian men tricked him into sending explicit photos of himself and threatened to release them to his friends and family. Weirdly enough, the two men, age 22 and 20, were actually brothers. They were both extradited to the US in August of 2023 to face charges for their crime.
Dark Abyss, Aaliyah Salazar. In a very chilling event on a Sunday, August 7th, 2022, 14 year old Aaliyah Salazar, while filming a TikTok video, got a gun pointed at her head and then fatally shot. She had been making a TikTok video with her friends at a home in Monte Vista, Colorado. 30 minutes prior, her grandfather, Gary Salazar, had dropped her off at the home to hang out with the so called friends. So, what happened? Well, according to the affidavit, as they made TikTok videos, one of the teen girls shot her. Police were able to to obtain the TikTok video and said that moments before her death, Aaliyah had been dancing, with someone being seen in the background, quote, fiddling with something on the bed. One of the teens later confessed that they saw another teen point the gun at Aaliyah and fire. She died on the spot. Her grandfather's theory was that it was all about jealousy. He believed the gun was a scare tactic by one of the teens to keep Aaliyah from her boyfriend, Emiliano Vargas. Also, the Glock 19 pistol used in the incident apparently belonged to Vargas, who was later charged alongside with the other two teens for making the weapon accessible. Based on this court statement, the first teen who witnessed the incident was sentenced to one year probation, 45 days detention, and given 45 days of credit for time served. Vargas, the owner of the house and the gun, was sentenced to 30 days in jail and given credit for 9 days served. The other teen who made the shot was given a probationary sentence. Also, all these sentences were arrived at the plea bargains which Aaliyah's family thought was unfair. The family had complained that, quote, the system was too focused on the future of the teen's charge and Aaliyah's death. But yeah, this Vargas dude was 21 dating a 17 year old minor and it's just sad that there was a life lost in all of this rest in peace to Aaliyah Salazar the Angel of Death Challenge. This next one is as brutal as it sounds. So, in Indonesia, sometime in 2022, there was a challenge going around TikTok where teens would jump in front of moving vehicles with the goal being to get the vehicle to stop. So, if the vehicle stops, you win, and if the vehicle doesn't stop, well, you kind of just delete yourself. Why was this a trend? I don't even need to say. This is TikTok. I, th that's my explanation. Locally known as Malai Cat Mout, the challenge did end up claiming lives with some of the gore videos being shared online as a warning. In June, June 2022, an 18-year-old got run over by a truck that failed to stop. Two of his friends narrowly escaped. In a separate incident, a 14-year-old boy dared a truck but failed to jump out of the way fast enough, ending up with a fractured skull and shattered teeth. The truck driver in this case actually ended up running away, resulting in a hit and run charge. Also, it seems that the challenge has been a thing since at least 2021, as that year there was a reported incident of a 13-year-old getting hit by a truck after he and eight others stood in front of it. Some of his friends also ended up in hospitals for injuries. TikTok has since banned and the trend with the phrase the angel of death challenge returning the usual warning message Basid McLean. If you Google Basid McLean, this is what comes up. I know I censored almost half of the image, but we'll get to exactly why I did that a little bit later. Now, this photo was making rounds around TikTok, I'm gonna assume for shock value, because the context of this image is truly disturbing. What is the context, you may ask? Well, he's holding his mother's severed head, Tanya Bird. He killed and dismembered her. Though the incident was trending on TikTok last year, this whole event happened in 2013. So, this is the story. 23-year-old McLean, who had a problem controlling his rage and also a learning disability, apparently told the court that he killed his 45-year-old mom, dissected her body, and spread the parts around South Bronx because she was dying and he was just trying to help. His ill-conceived murder and cover-up plan, however, quickly unraveled after a neighbor found part of the body parts while walking her dog at around 4.30 in the morning. It turned out that McLean had tried to conceal his crime by distributing the body parts around the block. Anyway, he got charged with murder alongside 26-year-old William Harris. The friend who helped him chop up the body and move it to different locations. William was actually picked up by surveillance camera together with McLean at a local store the night before they purchased a saw in cash. And I think in general, he was a disturbed guy given how family members would talk about him after the incident. His aunt, Cassandra McLean, for instance, called him a monster, stating that he premeditated the murder. His sister, Porsche Lavette, also said McLean told her he did nothing wrong when he killed their mom. And who started spreading this photo around on TikTok? Well, we'll never find out. I said this in part one, but chances are, it's just some edgy teen trying to ruin some people's days. Beanbag Adventures One of the scariest sides of TikTok is horror talk, and this next case fits perfectly within that genre. Let's start with a video. This is footage from Beanbag Adventures, a Chinese content creator specializing in urban exploration, and has been terrifying viewers ever since, as it shows what appears to be a pool full of deceased babies. Now, theories started immediately flying around to try and explain why these seemingly freshly decomposing bodies would just be lying in this long-abandoned laboratory, with one of the most prominent being that this was all part of some sort of underground organ harvesting ring. There's even been an entire Reddit thread made to try and piece together what might 
have actually happened there. But to this day, there remains countless unanswered questions. The order of events that is confirmed, though, is that in February of 2022, Beanbag Adventures first posted part one of their video onto Douyin, and it showed children's bodies at various stages of decomposition, along with maggots swimming in the water around them. Now, at the time, he offered a disclaimer in his video stating that these were simply props from a movie, but looking back, this was likely only done to avoid him getting banned from the platform, as he would actually return 10 months later on December 26th, 2022, where he would make a follow-up video which I've been showing you bits and pieces of. In it, people have noticed that the decomposition seems to be much, much worse than it was before, along with there being evidence that these potential killings might still be taking place. For instance, at the entrance, he found strange bottles and pipes that weren't there before. And as if to go back on his previous movie props disclaimer, he shows the bodies again, only this time they're decomposed all the way to the bones, essentially proving that these were never merely props. Gore talk. You can probably guess where this is headed just based on the title, but yes, there is a bunch of gore on TikTok that you can find on the For You page. Sometimes they get banned, sometimes they don't, but with my years of using TikTok, I think I've had it since 2020. So with about four years of using TikTok, I have seen a ton of gore on there, and a lot of times they just don't get taken down. Sometimes they even have 1 million views. How did they get away with it? I don't know. I really don't know how these sometimes accounts get away with it. What I've seen a lot of, though, is animal gore. So those sometimes stay up a lot, at least from what I had seen. I don't know about now as of like March of 2024, but those were the ones that I would see like with tens of thousands of comments and millions of views of people complaining like, why is this still up? Why is this still up? <laughs> I really don't know. But it's not just animal stuff because uh, people would also just post like cartel videos. But yeah, sometimes TikTok's system to remove stuff automatically is just stupid. And sometimes they do need like a handful of reports from people on the For You page to get the message and be like, oh, okay, we should take this down. But yeah, it's just the fact that it does exist. At my prives are open. So I talked about CP in uh, the first TikTok iceberg, and unfortunately, it's also made its way onto this list. So in 2022, TikTok was being used openly to peddle CP. So if you don't already know, you can make a private TikTok account that only people you approve to join can see what you post, and you can simply share that password to that private account, and whoever has access to it can see what's on the account. You know, that despite password sharing being against TikTok's terms of service. Now, on TikTok, that idea of password sharing sharing meant some users could upload these graphic videos of minors and then create other publicly visible profiles, inviting people to view what's on the account. They would then share the TikTok password to the private account with whoever was interested. The person who sort of brought this whole thing to light was TikTok creator Sierra Adair. She said that she found this account called at my prives are open after someone who had logged into it through investigation, I guess, shared its contents in public. The content was a preteen who, let's just say, was doing some majorly inappropriate stuff. And strangely, after she reported it to TikTok for new Nudity, she got a notification from TikTok a little later, claiming that they found no violations. Adair's video calling out the issue went so viral that it got to the Department of Homeland Security with an agent, Special Agent Waylon Hinkle, telling her in an email that they were, quote, working on it. TikTok also came under fire for its posting in private feature, which allowed accounts to peddle CP as they simply bypass detection by misspelling private, whether that be PRVT, PRIV, and, you know, a bunch of other combinations. And yeah, it's not really a shocker that TikTok, you know, the app that began as a dancing app for kids would be a huge hub for PDF files. So yeah, uh, like I said in part one, I, this is how I ended part one. <laughs> it's funny that I'm ending the list with this statement too, but it is protect your kids. Make sure they're being safe on the internet and make sure they're not talking to anyone that they don't know. All right, guys, now we're here at part two of the iceberg, where I'm going to give you guys updates on the past TikTok icebergs. Zachary Latham. In the first TikTok iceberg video, we talked about Zachary Latham. Basically, in 2020, he got into a feud with his neighbor for being told not to speed on the same street that they both lived in, Thornhill Road. The feud escalated to Latham stabbing and killing his neighbor, William Durham, who had approached him at his house. Some thought that he did it for TikTok fame, but it wasn't known for sure. So what's the update? Well, despite being charged with second-degree reckless manslaughter on March 30th, 2023, the court found him not guilty on all accounts, including aggravated assault and weapons offenses. So yes, he is a completely free man. His public defenders argued for self-defense, stating that he feared for his safety when approached by Mr. William. And that argument won over the jury. The judge, Kristen P. Arigo, did however leave Zachary with some pretty heavy words, saying, Mr. Latham, you were successful in your defense, 
but you still have to live with the events of those days and the consequences of it. And yeah, I think the judge has it pretty spot on. Joseph Jimenez. Still in part one, I feel like I'm referencing part one so many times, but it's just coincidental. Anyway, in part one, we covered a story about Joseph Jimenez. In summary, Jimenez shot and killed two friends, 18-year-old Riley Goodrich and 19-year-old Anthony Barajas. He killed them in a movie theater where they had gone to watch The Forever Purge. That happened in July of 2021, and Jimenez's excuse was that the voices were telling him that if he killed them, he would be saving the world. Now, the update is that the court determined that Jimenez was not insane. A judge ruled against that argument following the prosecution, stating that first, Jimenez knew the victims were innocent, and second, he made up his mind about 20 minutes prior to the shooting even though the voices he was talking about had already gone silent. It is likely that by the time I upload this, he'll be in state prison as his sentencing was on February 26th. I also have to add that there was a pretty strong argument of his insanity by his defense team with Jimenez's own sister, Daisy Jimenez, testifying how he had been diagnosed with schizophrenia with paranoid hallucinations back in 2020. He had been to a mental facility after a quote, spiral into anxiety, paranoia, and hearing voices following the death of their mother. And just to be clear, if he had been found insane, it would have ended up in a state hospital rather than a state prison. Following that ruling, Riverside County District Attorney Mike Hestron told the press, this will not bring back the lives of Anthony and Riley, but it will bring a measure of justice for their families. Claire Miller. And speaking of the insanity plea, the sentencing of Claire Miller also shows how the court approaches such situations. Now Claire, who we've covered multiple times on the channel, was determined to be mentally ill, though not mentally disabled. What she did was she actually murdered her disabled sister, Helen. This means that while the court recognized her plight, if you can call it that, in terms of the state of mind, it believed that should not be used as an excuse for her conduct on that day. So, on a March 10th, 2023 ruling, they gave her 12 and a half to 40 years for the charge of third degree murder. That means it'll be at least 12 and a half years before she's eligible for parole. And that sentencing structure, with minimum and maximum years, is often handed out with the court hoping that prison will rehabilitate someone based on the circumstances under which they were convicted. The official name for it is indeterminate sentencing. For Miller, the court thought of it as sentencing, quote, the nature of the offense, her young age, her mental condition at the time, and the protection of society. Suitcase Murders In part 2 of the Iceberg series, we looked at an interesting case where some teens were using an app called Randonautica, and while filming their adventure on Alki Beach, they came across a suitcase that had a trash bag in it and was producing some foul odor. That turned out to be the body of 27-year-old Austin Wenner, whose death would also be connected to that of 35-year-old Jessica Lewis, whose body had been found a month before. Now, at the time, it was unknown who killed them and why, but now we have an update. It turns out that it was their landlord who did it. Apparently, the two had rented in an upstairs bedroom from him, and on June 9th, 2020, he shot them to death in the home in what investigations suspected was likely due to unpaid rent and, quote, bringing potential criminal activity into the home. He then tried to get rid of the bodies in two different waterways. That's how Austin's remains ended up on Alki Beach, 11 miles away from the Burien, Washington home. The landlord, 65-year-old Michael Dudley, was convicted on four counts of murder on December 8th, 2022. Two of those got dropped, and on the remaining two, he got sentenced to 46 years and eight months in prison. Freya and Friends. In part three of this series, I featured fellow content creator True Crime Cam, who mainly focuses on short form content and also has a podcast. And one of the cases she covered was this one. A story where Raisa Nunez Borges, in an attempt to find out if she was psychotic, lured and killed 18 year old Ariane Barbara with the help of her friends, Jefferson Rodriguez and Enzo Carneiro. And I just want to say that Enzo goes by Freya, just to not be confused, or at least went by Freya when she was still on TikTok and not in prison. Anyway, the update on this case which happened in August of 2021, is that all three were found guilty by a court in Joania. Matos was sentenced to 15 years in prison in March last year. Later in August, Borges, aka Freya, was sentenced to 15 years as well, while Rodriguez was sentenced to 14 years. They also all got fines. An interesting detail that I also found about this story is that in April of 2022, Jefferson, while in custody awaiting sentencing, hand wrote a letter to the judge saying that he was truly suffering in prison. Part of the letter reads, and please note this is Google translated from Portuguese, Portuguese, I want to apologize for using this letter to describe my situation. I've had cases of psychotic and depressive episodes. I had an attack that almost cut my eye. He also added that at the time he was working in the prison's health center, and apparently the work made him dream of becoming a nurse and doctor. He however didn't ask to be released, he was just writing a letter to let the judge know that he was being attacked in the prison. Apparently he was being attacked by other inmates and police officers, though the prison authority denied those claims. Zombie Woman. Back in 2021, this video surfaced, captured by a woman in her apartment in Seattle.
Many theories were floating around, such as maybe this woman was a victim of domestic abuse and had escaped her abuser, or maybe she was on hard drugs. Well, no guys, this was an anti-vax stunt. The spread word that the vaccine is, is not good. She was perfectly fine. And these are some of her social media posts, you know, revealing her true intentions, that she was gonna let people know that the vaccine is, is disgusting, it's horrible, don't trust it. It's, it, it, it took me a little bit while, but it's like, it's like, almost like, like Halloween, like zombie makeup. It is, yeah. I don't think any of this is real blood. You know, just, uh, and then, But yeah, that's it for that one. Wow. Okay, guys, that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, I'm going to assume you enjoyed it if you made it this far into the video. Make sure to leave a like, please. A lot of effort went into this video. Please leave a like. And it would be awesome if you could subscribe. If you were new, I hope I earned your subscription. And I just want to give a big shout out to the guests in this video. Seriously, subscribe to all of them. Their links are going to be near the top of the description. Not exactly at the top. They're going to be near the top of the description. So make sure to go check them all out. All of them make morbid videos except for Pyro. So Pyro, I just wanted him in the video just because we became friends recently. I was like, I got to get Pyro. I gotta, I've been watching him forever. So I got to get Pyro on the video. Yeah. That's really it. The journey to three mil. And I got some more specials coming out if they're not already out. I'll see you guys next time I upload.